what position your parents were in when you were conceived. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I mean, I like to think that I was a missionary baby. You know? <laughs> I think we all would. We'd like to think we were like, like a sweet, like Cinemax, like a, just a couple thrusts, and then like, and then like, like a pan to a window, and then like it dissolved, and like nine months later we were born. <laughs> But statistically, that's just not the case. <laughs> Some of us in here are not missionary babies. <laughs> Some of us are cowgirl babies. <laughs> Some of us are reverse cowgirl babies. And there's some of us in here, I'm not going to say who, some of us are doggy style babies. <laughs> I do not want to be a doggy style baby. <laughs> I don't think anybody wants to be a bit like at your first moment of life, your first like initial experience with this world, like your, your father's all sweaty, like from like gripping, and your, your mom's dead, like, oh, and like, and then, like, that, like ar arching back, and, and she's down, like, and like the hands on like the comforter, like, and, like, and, like, the, and like the leg, like the one leg goes up, like face down on the pit, like, it's like, it's like angry, like it's not, like, not, not, sort of like not even enjoying it, just like that angry. Nobody wants to be that. I'm glad you're with me on that. A lot of people don't really like support the idea, that notion that their parents have fucked. Like your parents have fucked. Like, not only that, like people, girls especially seem to have this idea in their head that they've like invented the dirty sex that they have, and they're like, oh, we were so bad, you know, like oh, my parents or grandparents did, like we we're so filthy, like you know, last night we had sex from behind, like oh, it was dirty, we had sex from behind, I couldn't see him, he was like dark and mysterious, like and I'm like, hold on, Dane Cook impression, just settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Have freaky sex like that, but your parents had sex from behind, and your grandparents had sex from behind. No. There was a depression on. You had to. <laughs> you had to, because like, people were too fucking ashamed to look each other in the face. And it's like, like six hours in a bread line and like 13 hours in a factory, and you come home with nine cents, and you look at your wife like it's a rough day, like no fuck, and she's like, right, well, just don't fucking look at me. because there's a good chance one of you had tuberculosis. It's <laughs> dangerous, a health risk. <sighs> I hate people. I mean, you guys are great because you can't come out tonight. You guys are awesome. But they're like, the majority of people I hate, but they make like kind of assumptions about your life or they think that you... They can help you, or they give you this advice that they will aid in your existence. It's like, fuck, leave me alone. Just go away. Like, so I was talking to somebody recently, and I was just telling, like, talking about my woes or whatever. I'm like, oh, I'm going to make some changes. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I'm, th I'm thinking of really making some moves. And they're like, wow, it's, it's really, you know, it makes perfect sense that you would say that at a time like this, because, you know, Mercury's in retrograde. <laughs> Well, there's a cock in Uranus. So. <laughs> Read one horoscope and you're Sigmund fucking Freud. Ridiculous. I want to get in the Guinness Book of World Records. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that be fucking awesome? I want to get in the Guinness Book of World Records. The problem is, though, that everybody trains for it now. Like, it doesn't just happen. 
Because back in the day, it used to just happen. Like, a dude would wake up one morning and discover he had the world's smallest head. Yeah. <laughs> like, he'd be in the bathroom, 7 a.m., brushing his teeth, and as the bristles scraped against his forehead, he'd be like, fuck, I'm getting a book for this. <laughs> Now I write trains. Like every record, it's like people are working. Like right now, somebody, I bet you, somebody is training to take the world's largest shit. It's definitely a guy. And he's probably Japanese. Just one more record we lose. Memorial Day. But I think a few ways that you can get in the Guinness Book of World Records. There's a lot of records out there that are unclaimed because nobody's thought of them. Like little abstract records that you too can own with a little imagination. Records like World Shittiest Father. <laughs> Just go for the gold. <laughs> World's Worst Taste in Movies. Are you the one who's like, oh, Sex in the City 2 is the greatest thing I've ever seen? <laughs> Fuck you, get the book. <laughs> <laughs> World's Creepiest Janitor. <laughs> <laughs> Ugliest third grade class. <laughs> it's an awkward age. Throwing <laughs> in sideways and shit. <laughs> World's worst transition. Anyone here in a relationship? <laughs> Nobody, we're all single, we all came out to meet somebody on Memorial Day. I'm gonna go to the comedy store and just find that one true love. Maybe they'll all be just remembering the soldiers like me. No, relationships are cool, you don't have to admit it. Relationships are great. I'm not in one right now, but they're, they're good when you're in one. Uh, the cool thing about relationships is when you're in one, you can say, you say things to one another, like deep, romantic, poetic shit that you can't possibly deliver on. <laughs> like you'll be lying in bed like late one night in a, in a post coital puddle of love goo. You know? <laughs> like just came so hard your eyes don't even work. Just like. <sighs> <laughs> you'll turn to the other person next to you and be like, I would claw my way out of hell for you. <laughs> <laughs> Settle down, meatloaf. <laughs> Let's start with I love you, and we'll work from there. But you say it, because you're in love. I once told a girl I would love her to the end of time. I don't remember her name. But you say it, because you're in love, and then you break up, and you forget you ever said any of that shit. Right under the rug. But there's a weird phase of, of a breakup that not a lot of people talk about. It happens like two and two and a half months after you break up, and you suddenly realize just how fucked up the other person was in bed. <laughs> this table knows exactly what it's talking about. Like, yeah, you do. It just hits you one day like a big black rubbery dildo, just boom in your face. <laughs> and you're like, Jesus Christ, that person was fucked up. We used to do all that stuff, and I was fine with it. Like, she could only come if I fucked her under the bed. That's weird. <laughs> Oh, we were in love. I forgot. No, I love you, baby. Of course, I'll do that. Of course, I will gently strangle you with your ex-boyfriend's boxer shorts. Because that's not weird at all. No, listen to me. Listen to me. I, I am your boyfriend. You are my girlfriend. And this is a bond of marriage. You have my heart and my soul. Of course, I will dress up like E.T. and the Reese's Pieces on your ass. You guys have been great. Have a great night.